The PS4 and Xbox One are here, but why exactly would you want to buy one? Let's take a look. You draw me in, and I can't slow down, no. Can you feel it too? There ain't no stopping now. Feet off the ground, head to the sky. Yeah, wind by my side. You and my vision, directly we collide. At number five, we have TV integration with the Xbox One. All right, so this probably sounds a little boring. I mean, who buys a game console just so they can watch TV? However, there's just a little bit more to it than that. If you take a look at the back of the Xbox One, you'll find an HDMI in port, which you're supposed to use with your cable or satellite box. And it works just fine. You can play games and watch TV at the same time, or use Kinect to change the channel with your voice. But since it's just a normal HDMI port, there's nothing stopping you from plugging in another game console. Want to play some GTA 5? Hook up your 360 and bam, you've got your game running inside the Xbox One. This does add a little lag, so you probably won't want to play all games like this, but it's a really cool little feature. You can even play a 360 and Xbox One game at the same time. Well, if you're totally crazy anyway. And while you're at it, why not play some Wii? While I'm waiting for the new Super Smash Bros., I guess I can buy my time by playing some Brawl on the Xbox One. Of course, you can plug your cable box into the Xbox One too. I mean, you know, if that's what you're into. Coming in at number four is streaming and recording your games. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of sites such as Twitch, which allow you to go online and watch tons of people play all sorts of different games. Usually, this requires either a pretty decent PC or expensive capture cards like what I'm using to record this video with. However, with the new consoles, you can capture directly to sites like Twitch and Ustream. Well, that is if you have a PS4. Microsoft announced streaming a few months ago, however, it actually didn't end up making it for launch. Luckily, the PS4 has no such problems. Quality isn't amazing, however, it's not too bad considering. As you can see, not only can you stream your gameplay, but you can also use the PlayStation camera to add your video as well as a little bit of commentary. On the other hand, you're able to record your gameplay with the Xbox One. You can use the game DVR to record clips as you play, and like the PS4, quality is only 720p, but it's really not too bad. You can edit gameplay on the Xbox and send it to your SkyDrive, and from there you can upload it to YouTube or do whatever you want with it. It might not replace a dedicated streaming setup, but being able to grab a quick clip or stream some gameplay straight from your console is really awesome. At number three, we have the new controllers for the PS4 and Xbox One. The DualShock 3 was a good controller, and the 360 gamepad was excellent, but these new consoles step it up a notch. On the PlayStation side, we're looking at a much, much better experience than before. The shape has been redesigned to fit better in the hand, and it's also got tweaked buttons and sticks. There's now a concave shape which fits your thumbs nicely, and the triggers are actually not terrible anymore. In comparison, the Xbox One controller isn't a huge leap, but it really doesn't have to be. It's seen some tweaks to the shape and design, and both the sticks and triggers feel better than on the 360. There's more to these controllers than a few minor improvements, however. The DualShock 4 comes packed with some serious tech. There's a touchpad like you'd find on a laptop in the center, along with a built-in speaker like the Wii U. There's also an LED on the back, which the PlayStation camera can pick up to track you in-game. The Xbox One controller might not be quite so advanced, however it does have one awesome feature, impulse triggers. While having rumble motors is nothing new, the One also puts a pair of vibrators inside the triggers. It sounds like a small thing, but it's a really cool addition, especially in racing games like Forza, where you get real feedback when the brakes lock up or you start smoking the tires. Both controllers are a solid step forward with some cool new features, however for my money, the Xbox One has the best controller period right now. Coming in at number two, we have the Kinect and PlayStation Camera. Last generation, we had the first Kinect and the PlayStation Move, and both were okay, but this time around, you actually might want to use them. Side by side, the Kinect is absolutely massive. However, don't let looks fool you. It's a lot more useful, and it's also included with every Xbox One. With the PlayStation Camera, you're also able to play a few augmented reality games, such as the Playroom, which is included with every PS4. And it's, you know, kind of fun, if you know you're into that. You know, it's kind of overrated though, I mean I don't really like it that much. You can also control the PlayStation 4 with your voice. PlayStation. Take screenshot. Resogun. Start. On the other hand, the Kinect is a little more full featured. Xbox, on. While it might be a little creepy, Kinect is actually always on and always listening. So all you need to do is walk into a room, say Xbox on, and it will automatically turn on both your TV as well as the Xbox. You can use voice control for a lot more than that though. Xbox, go to Call of Duty Ghosts. Xbox, snap TV. Xbox, go home. 
you're also able to use your hands to navigate through the Xbox operating system. It's not really any faster than using the controller or voice, but it's a cool feature. Kinect can also log you in with the camera automatically, along with telling multiple people apart without having to sync individual controllers. All in all, while the PlayStation camera is nice, the Kinect is really what gives you that wow kind of next-gen feel. Coming in at number one is the sheer power of the new consoles. As great as the Xbox 360 and PS3 are, after seven years they're really starting to show their age. Take a look at the PS4 and Xbox One, and you'll see that they solidly move the needle forward. Inside, you'll find each has an 8-core AMD processor and GCN-based graphics. They might not be able to match up with a $2,000 computer, but these new consoles have a lot in common with gaming PCs. The graphics inside both consoles are basically the same thing as you'll find in an AMD graphics card. The PS4 actually takes this a step forward with a full 8GB of super-fast GDDR5 memory, which is more than what you'll find in even $1,000 graphics cards. Having a full 8 cores to play with also allows you to do multiple things at once. For example, play a game as well as take a Skype call. All of this tech jargon equals some awesome graphics. Rise Center of Rome on the Xbox One really shows how much more power we've got now compared to the last gen, and Killzone Shadowfall is a PS4 exclusive that's got tons of great lighting effects and depth of field. We've got Forza Motorsport 5 for the Xbox One, which is a solid racing game that runs at full 1080p. And finally, there's Battlefield 4 for both consoles that nicely wraps up solid graphics and great gameplay. All of this together makes me really excited to be a gamer right now. There is so much awesome stuff. However, what do you guys think? What is your favorite feature of the Xbox One and PS4? Definitely be sure to let me know in the comments below. Also, huge shout out to Audible for making this video possible. Audible.com is a leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. I love that Audible supports the channel because it really is something I use all the time, whether I'm in the car or listening to an audiobook on my tablet. Lately, I've been listening to Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, one of my favorite books of all time and definitely worth a listen, especially if you've seen the movie. If you guys haven't tried Audible yet, all you need to do is go to audible.com slash Austin to download this book or any book you want for free when you try Audible. It's an awesome service, I use it all the time, so definitely be sure to go check out audible.com slash Austin to go get your free audiobook. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel to catch lots more videos like this. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.